Welcome to January's Leetco Challenge. Hope you all are having a great 2021. Uh, today's problem is called Word Ladder. Now, given two words, begin word and end word, and a dictionary word list, return the length of the shortest transformation sequence from begin word to end word, such that only one letter can be changed at a time, and each transformed word must exist in the word list. So if we had two words, hit and cog, um, we are able to change one letter, and if that letter is inside of our word list, we can move to that letter, and then we can continue on the algorithm until we hit cog. Here we can see we can go from hit to hot to dot to dog and then to cog, which is going to return to us a length of five. Uh, it's done four steps, but there's a total of five words inside of our, I guess, uh, path. So this problem is basically a graph problem. Right, we want to have some sort of graph, um, probably a dictionary with the word as the key, and then a list or a set, for that matter, of all the words that it can go to. And those words are all going to be inside this word list and only have one character uh, difference. So the main part that we want to figure out is how do we figure out if two words only have one character um, uh, difference. So let's go through our approach. We do have some constraints here. Um, the most important one to note is that the length of each word inside of our word list and our begin word are all the same. So I think we can assume that uh, we don't need to worry about length of the words. They're all gonna be the same. So the very first thing I wanna do is write a function to check if only one character is different. Okay, once I have that, I'm gonna create my graph using that function. Then I'm going to do a breadth first search here using a Q. And if we are able to find the n-word, we can find n-word, then return the number of steps that we took to get there. Um, and we'll have that inside of our inside of our Q. So we'll track that inside of the Q here. Alright, so very first thing is to write our function, and we'll call this one character, and we'll have and put two strings. Now, um, the first thing we want to make sure is that they're not the same because we don't want to end up adding in a word that's the same because, you know, all, I don't know, all the characters are matching. So uh, instantly, if we say, all right, s equals t, then just return false immediately. Now, otherwise, what I'm going to do is go through for i in range of the length of s and I'm going to make the assumption that all these are the same. We want to uh, count how many characters are different. So here I'll have a count. And start with zero. And we'll say right, if s of i does not equal t of i, then increase our count by one. Now finally, we just want to say, hey, is the count equal to one? And if it is, then we can assume that with these two strings, only one character is different. So that means uh, their you know, transformation path is acceptable. So, Okay, so now we have this function and now we wanna create our graph. So I'm gonna call this graph and we'll make this a default dictionary. We can make it a list or we can make a set, uh, but I'm gonna make a set here. Now for, let's see, um, wanna make our dictionary so for all the words, I guess I'll call it S in word list. And one thing to note is I'll actually have to add this begin word here. If you look at this example, you can see that the word hit is not inside of the word list. Um, but we need to add that into our graph, or otherwise the algorithm wouldn't, wouldn't work. So what I have to do is say, uh, put that begin word right here. And then we'll say for T, same thing, word list plus begin word uh, we're going to say if one character only one character is different then we want to add to our graph the s and we're going to add uh, the t which is going to be one of the words that we can travel to uh, from this word so it's kind of like an adjacency list um, but, it's a, but it's a graph right now for our BFS. And to do that, we want to start off by creating a queue, call that a queue. And we will make a tuple of 
the word and the number of steps that we've taken so far. So uh, here, this would be what? The begin word, it's all right. And so far we've taken zero steps. And keep in note, we need to also have a visited um, hash. I'll make it a set to make sure that we don't get into any infinite loops. So if you've visited this node or this word before, then we don't need to uh, continue the algorithm because we've already been here. There's no need to, there's no path that's going to make us go back, like repeat the same node. Okay, so now we want to do our BFS. If, oh, I should say while Q, first pop off our candid, and I guess, should I call this, um, I call it node and step equals Q dot pop left. All right, so what do we need to do here? Um, first, we need to check have we visited this place before? And if not, then we could add to our queue. So if node not in visited, uh, I suppose we're going to add it first. And we want to add all the places that we can travel to. That's going to be for, I call it next in graph of the node um, add to our queue a tuple of the next node and the number of steps that we took plus one. Now I should probably also add uh, if not if an x is or not in visited uh, just in case we've already been here um, yeah it'd be the same issue like if we've already been here before uh, we don't want to actually add that again because that's just a waste of time. So we'll do that. And I should also believe add. We need to check here, right? If the node is equal to the N word, then we're done. So all we need to do is return the steps. Uh, but we're actually going to have to add one here because uh, we want to return the total length, not just the number of steps that we've taken, the entire length. Uh, otherwise, if we can't, find anything we get out of this loop then we return a zero because I suppose this algorithm isn't possible so let's see if this works we may have forgotten stuff so let's check okay that looks like it works and I would submit this but I already know this doesn't work this would it's gonna hit a time limit exception and the reason for that is time complexity wise uh, we are gonna do a n squared right because we have a nested loop here for all the words in the word list word list so that's n squared uh, times m, which would be the length of the word. And that apparently is too long. Uh, imagine that some of our test cases have a word list that are humongous, right? Thousands of words. Um, yeah, it could go to 5,000. Well, then this is going to be a huge amount of time to take, right? So what can we do here? Because we lose a lot of time creating this graph, is there a better way to do this? Well, there are a couple ways, but one way I thought was pretty clever. We could uh, create a string, right? And we'll call this alpha and have every single word, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And what I'm going to do is instead of doing a nested N for N, uh, for N squared, I will instead uh, go through each character inside of the word and check um, all the different letters, like try to check every single different letter inside of that word. So if I had the word like uh, ABC, then I'll check, uh, starting with the first letter, I'll check, okay, BBC, and then what about CBC, DBC, so on and so forth. And then also check the second character, which would be like ABC, so that would be AAC, a, B, C, A, C, C, and so on and so forth. And depending on how long the word list is, this is actually going to be faster because this guarantees only 26 characters. So in total, it would only be N times M times 26. So how about we do that? Let's forget about this algorithm here and try to instead create every possibility, check to see if that's in our word list. And if it is, then add it to our graph. 
Um, so let's get rid of this. It's, this is not very <clears throat> efficient. Uh, what I'll do is have a word set, which is just going to be a set of all the word lists. And I need to add, again, the begin word. And let's see. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. Um, and now for, um, say I in range of length of S, we are going to create some temporary strings and try to um, create like all the possible different co combinations inside of uh, our alphabet, like changing each character inside of a word. So what, how we can do that is uh, let's take our word and we'll say, um, Let's see, for S in word 0 to I, and P2 will be S uh, I plus 1 all the way to the end. Now, we need to go for all the characters inside of our alphabet, so we'll call this A in uh, alpha, and we're going to create some temporary strings here and say, all right, temporary will equal to P1 plus a plus p2. Now, if this temporary is in the word set and make sure that's not equal to uh, the s that we're checking now, then we'll add it to our graph. We'll say, okay, add to our graph mm, the s dot add temp. And this graph is going to end up looking the same. It's just that time complexity wise, uh, depending on how long this word list is, this could be faster. Everything else should remain the same. This algorithm should remain the same. So let me see if this works. Oh, okay. Looks like I messed something up. Let's see here. Let's take a look at what this graph ends up looking like. And I may have uh, just messed something up. Hmm. Okay, so it does not equal. Yeah, so that's my fault. Okay, that looks better. And it looks like that's the answer. So let's get rid of this. And let's try submitting that. And there we go, accepted. Yeah, so time complexity wise, this would be n times m times 26. Now, there are some other ways we could do it. The solution here they give you is a little bit different but uh, they use a mask and they use that mask character where they, uh, I think you use an asterisk in each side of one of these characters and use that at, instead to indicate to us whether we can go to the next one or not. And that works too. Um, I believe that time complexity is like M squared times N or something like that. Um, but you know what, like I like this solution because it's easy for me to understand. Um, using masks kind of got confusing, so um, I think both are acceptable and that's that. So thanks for watching my channel and remember do not trust me, I know nothing.